Hello and welcome to the second in a series of Thermos training videos. Last time we covered the basics of using Thermos to create a heat map of a place and defining a simple heat network optimization. This time I want to talk a bit more about the optimization decisions Thermos makes and how to understand what it is doing. So afterwards, you should have learned what decisions Thermos can make and when it creates a solution. How you can control Thermos's optimization decisions, including deciding which buildings to connect to the network, deciding which routes to use for connecting buildings and deciding between supply locations. Before we start looking at the program, I'd like to give a brief description of what I mean by optimization. In this context, an optimization problem is one where we have a group of decisions to make which control how good an outcome is. The task then for the optimizer is to make a permissible choice for each decision so as to make the outcome as good as possible. Ideally, there should be no way to improve the outcome by changing any of the decisions that have been made. However, in practice, true optimization is often very difficult. There are too many choices to consider and not enough clever tricks to skip to the end without looking at too many alternatives. In Thermos, we settle for producing a high quality, satisfactory answer which can perhaps still be improved on. The important decision variables in Thermos are all related to the objects you can see on the map. So here we have an image of a Thermos map. The decision variables that we're talking about are, firstly, for each building that is being considered, should it be connected to a heat network or should it use an individual heating system? For example, its own gas boiler or heat pump. So each of these yellow question marks, that decision is being made. As well as that, for every path that's being considered, should it have a heat pipe in it and how big should that heat pipe be? This is illustrated by the red dots on this map for where the decisions are being made. For some paths, this is the same as whether the building is connected. So for example, this building and this path. For others, the path may be going to several buildings. So where I've drawn this diamond here, everything down pipe of that will be affected by this size of pipe. Finally, at the supply locations, we have to decide whether to purchase a supply and if so, how large it should be. What I've described here illustrates another point, which is that the optimization is also defined by some constraints. These are rules about how one decision relates to another. For example, in Thermos, if we decide to meet a building's demand with a heat network, we must also decide to put pipes in so as to connect the building up with the supply location. The other thing we should touch on is the objective in Thermos. Once we have made our decisions, how do we calculate how well we like the result? Thermos's objective is phrased in financial terms. The goal is always to maximise the difference between a solution's revenues and the costs of building and operating it. Calculation of each term in the objective has a little detail, but this is the list of component parts. Revenues come from one place, connected buildings. Each building that has been connected provides revenue, and the magnitude of that revenue is determined by the tariff which the building is on. Costs break down into capital costs for equipment and ongoing cost. There are a variety of capital costs, including the pipes, the plant for the network, 
the heat exchangers in the buildings and for any insulation. The ongoing costs are for operating costs of the plant, including maintenance, fuel and any monetised emissions. Here where it says operating costs of the plant, including sometimes individual systems, this relates to the changing objective in Thermos. This is possible in the user interface by opening the menu going to objective and on this page we have the options here to maximize the network NPV or maximize the whole system NPV. Revenues are only considered when optimizing the network NPV and are ignored in the whole system NPV. However, the ongoing costs for individual systems are only considered as part of the whole system perspective. Now we've talked about decision variables, constraints and objectives, we can have a look at how these are managed in the user interface. I will walk through the different places in the interface where you can control the decisions the optimizer is taking and the constraints that it must satisfy. So I will return to the map that we used in the previous video. First we'll have a look at the decision variables we're already familiar with. These are the building connection, which refers to whether the building is connected to the supply, whether it is impossible to connect to the supply or whether it's better not to connect it to the supply. The pipe inclusion, whether a pipe is part of the network or excluded from the network, and the supply choice. Both building connection decisions and pipe inclusion decisions work in the same way. By selecting a building or path, pressing the C key, you can change the status from forbidden things to optional to required and then back to forbidden again. Optional elements create a decision for the optimizer. Should they be in or out of the solution? Conversely, required or forbidden elements represent a constraint on the optimizer. The solution must include or exclude them respectively. So there is no decision for the optimizer to make. The supply choice decisions are created when you convert a building into a supply with the S key. Note here that we are creating both some decisions and some constraints. A decision about whether to use the supply and a constraint on the size of the supply. So with this one, I'll set a maximum capacity of 10 megawatts. There are a few other decisions and constraints that I did not cover in the previous video. These are mostly decisions about individual heating systems, insulation measures, and constraints about emissions limits and minimum and maximum pipe size limits. Individual heating systems and insulation measures are both set up in similar parts of the user interface. So to access them, we click on the menu and then for insulation, you can go here and individual systems here. So to set up another individual system, we've already got a gas central heating one with particular parameters that you can change in here. But let's go ahead and add another individual system. So we're going to look at a ground source heat pump with a cost around three cents per kilowatt hour, a fixed capital cost of 5,000 currency. Uh, we could do a variable cost of 15 currency per kilowatt and an operating cost. of 10 currency per kilowatt. The emissions we could use a slightly lower emission than gas 
So we'll go for 50 grams per kilowatt hour. And that one's now added. Similarly, we can add an insulation measure. So just by clicking here, add measure. So we may want to do, say, solid wall insulation. So this applies to wool. The fixed cost could be around a thousand currency with a variable cost of five per square meter. Um, this maximum effect refers to the maximum demand reduction of around 25%, so I'll leave it at that. And this is if you apply it to 30% of the walls. So now that's added to the insulation measures section. So to enable these settings, we need to go back to the map, map view. And then we can click on a building, so I'll choose this one. And then when you press E, edit candidates. So this is where we can show these insulation and individual systems on this tab here. So in here, you can see how to select what insulation types the building could be given, what alternatives to a network connection the building could use. These are both more decisions for the optimizer. It's also got a counterfactual heating system, which relates to the current system the building has. If the building already has gas central heating, the tool will consider whether to connect it to the district heating network or a ground source heat pump or leave it as gas central heating. Let's look at some other global constraints which will apply to the whole system. The emission limits, first of all. So in the objective tab, when you scroll down, we've got this option here for emissions limits. Um, this is basically setting a constraint on the maximum annual emissions for any allowable solution. For example, if I tick this and then enter 50 tonnes a year, whatever solution the model chooses, it must not exceed 50 tonnes a year from all of the buildings in the solution. This is a kind of sibling to this emissions costs where if you set a very high emission cost for any of these, then it will also have a, a similar effect, kind of to imposing a hard maximum. Similar to the emissions limits, another global constraint is in the pipe costs page. Within this pipe costs page, we have a selection of different diameters of pipe, with its capacity, losses, pipe cost, currency per meter, and civil cost in currency per meter for both soft and hard engineering. Within this, you can set the minimum and maximum diameter of the pipe that the model can consider. For example, you can delete some rows from the lower ends to create a different minimum, and you can also delete the rows from the maximum. By setting the maximum pipe size, this is similar to setting the supply maximum capacity, as no pipe larger than this can ever be put into the solution. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the decisions and constraints at work in the Thermos tool.